Welcome to the Hooksett Library's 2022 Candidates Forum, a series that helps connect voters with those running for elected offices in Hooksett. I'm Brittany Overton, the Adult Services Librarian at Hooksett Library. In this video, we talk with Germano Martins, who is running for Budget Committee. Germano, thank you for taking the time to share with us your interest in the Budget Committee. Well, thank you for doing this, Brittany. Great, let's start by having you tell us a little about yourself and the experiences you've had that you feel would support you in the role of Budget Committee member. Well, okay, um, I will start with, I'm a longtime resident of uh, Hooksett, where I live and I raised a family. I lived here for more than 30 years. Um, I believe I'm very familiar with the town. I'm also very familiar with, uh, with the schools where my kids went to school and did well, so schools work for them. I want them, uh, uh, I want schools to work for everybody as well. And um, uh, in terms of uh, experience, I like to like bring down experience and education because that's important as well. As far as education go, I, I attended uh, uh, college in New Hampshire, graduate school, undergraduate as well, graduated with a master's degree in business administration from New Hampshire College, which is the pre predecessor for the uh, South New Hampshire University. In fact, my classes were right at the library, where the Excel libraries today were my classrooms in late 80s. And uh, so it's a familiar place for me. And, um, and in terms of, uh, of experience, I have a, a, a mix I would say a combination of experience I think is important. You know, I worked in manufacturing as I was going to college. I worked many years in manufacturing. So I have the experience of working at a business. And after I graduated, I started working for the state of New Hampshire where I worked uh, more than 32 years for the Department of Health and Human Service. And I've held many positions there. And, uh, and uh, I'm also part of, I have been part of many, many boards currently I am a elected director at the State Employee Association. So we do budgets right there. I know budget big and small. I'm a trustee at the New Hampshire Retirement System. As you know, we have a big pension. Our pension is $12 billion, nothing small there. And uh, I've served there a combination of 10 years. I'm currently serving there. And uh, I'm part of the audit commission, audit committee. <clears throat> and uh, so budgets, big and small, uh, are very, very uh, alike each other. You know, there's nothing small about a budget. Everything is important because behind every budget, there's a, a taxpayer, and that's somebody who's paying for all this. So, so I, I, I also have a, a, a track record that you can check on. I've served in the budget committee for three years. My record is very easy. You just go online and you can see and read that uh, these votes turn out to be the correct way to go and the responsible way to go to this. So I think that's it. <clears throat> and what is your opinion of the current municipal budget? Are there areas that you feel need greater consideration? Well, uh, I always look at, the, at Hookset as a town that is growing and it's doing a great job doing that. You know, and this is why a lot of people want to move to Hookset because they want to experience what we experience, a beautiful town to live. Uh, I believe we have a very good uh, town administration. Our town manager is doing a fantastic job. So do all the managers and workers, by the way. Workers do an excellent job. And all I see is like good results. And uh, we have, uh, I've seen our budgets being a very lean, I would say working machine, you know. There is really no pork or fat to cut anywhere. There's a lot of opportunities to do things better and we're always doing this and we work together well. Management works together with employees and we work together with town managers and, 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 and budget committees and all that. So I think this town is going in the right direction and we gotta do everything we can to improve that and contribute to the growth of Hooksat and, and everything that we do. Thank you. This next question comes in two parts. First, what approach would you take for reviewing budget requests and drafting municipal and school budgets? And secondly, how do you see this as being an effective process for budgeting? You know, 
as I look at a budget, you know, budgets, whether they're small or large, private or public, they all have two things in common. You all have to manage. One thing is we got to manage the needs with the available dollars. And the second thing in common is that every penny counts. It doesn't matter if it's a small or large budget. So when I look at a budget, I want to look to see if all the items that we need to address are there. So we do not have surprises in the future that could be very costly to come up with a big item, ticket item that we can afford or we didn't plan for a budget. So it's not just a matter of looking at everything with a fine comb to see what you're gonna cut and save here and there, because I'll tell you this, there are savings that we can't afford. You know, I commonly say that it costs more money to send somebody to jail than Yale. I used to drive by a garage in, in Manchester. I used to drive all the time. And, and there was a sign that says, I can change your oil I can, or I can change your, your engine. You pick, right? It's a lot like that. If you cut the maintenance, you're going to have to buy a new truck. But at some point, you will need to buy a new truck because repairing becomes too expensive. So you have to have a, a careful balance to match what we can do and always look for a responsive and responsible budget to the needs. I think this is a, a good approach because I think it's a, it's economically fiscal uh, responsive approach. Um, I wanna add one other thing that I think it's important. And that is this, when we're looking at a budget, we seem to always be very looking very close together what we are looking. And so, sometimes we're short focus, but sometimes we need to expand our view to see if we can actually introduce or have other fundings that we can add to it. Like for instance, states and federal funding. Like a municipal uh, budget only has one payer, right? It's you and me, the taxpayers. But state have other means of funding, federal government have other means of funding, and we have to be open-minded to look at everything, not as an alternative, but as something that's gonna augment and increase uh, that chance. So, so that's, that's the other thing I wanna say. Thank you. How do you balance the taxpayer's expense with the need for services? That's very important. You know, as I said, in a municipal budget, we have one sort of funding, and that is the taxpayer. So to see that every dollar that we're using is used in a responsible way, that is going to a need that actually exists for real. And I'm saying this, everything that I've seen on those budgets have been very lean. So as a taxpayer, I'm a taxpayer myself, it is important that we look at the amounts of taxes and how, what is the tax impact? You know, there's a lot of things that we do that could have a bigger tax impact than other things that could be small and have a larger tax impact if there's no match funds, if there's nothing else that's going to be there, they're going to pay for itself. So the tax impact, it's not just what is the tax impact tomorrow, but it's what, what is the tax impact on the long run, because things can be very deceiving. And, um, and, and, and I said this again. Budgets, big or small, will have to, to, to match the need with dollars available. And, and, um, and I think that's, that's the way to go as far as tax impact. Okay, great. And what would be your approach to planning for large future expenses, say the replacement of a fire engine? Well, uh, we do have a lot of items like that, like replacement of a fire engine, replacement of a roof. Uh, all of a sudden, 10 uh, employees, they are retiring. And those are big bills that comes together. You know, the way to, I think the best approach to this is to have a capital reserve fund. When you have a capital reserve fund, you can put money away. It's like putting money in the bank so the money's gonna be there when you need it. Imagine if uh, those fire trucks, you know, I was surprised to see the cost of them. They could be like $200,000 plus for a truck, right? And you're not gonna be able to add this to a budget. Imagine what would it do? But if you have a capital reserve fund, you can put money away like $30,000, $50,000 every year. So when you need, you're gonna have that there. So I think it's very important also for voters to know that when you see that on the award articles, that those are important th things to vote for and approve because this is what's going to keep that tax 
uh, build without having uh, escalating in a jump. You know, if you know somebody's going to retire in a few years, it's it's smart to like just put the money away because once you vested, you're going to retire anyways, and that's <laughs> it's important to know. But the other side of this is that we need to be informed and look to what those items are. Because, you know, some things are easy, right? We need police cars, we need fire trucks, we need a roof, but what are other expenses? You know, a lot of people sometimes were surprised when uh, the school needed like 10 folks that were retired, you know, and people retire, yeah. And we have to actually research and make sure that all the things that we're doing like this, you know, and improve our opportunities to uh, level the, uh, the, tax, the tax bill like that. So that's my approach. Thank you, Germano. It's been great to hear your thoughts on the budget committee. Well, thank you.